Since Donald Trump left Washington in early 2021, he and his wife Melania Trump moved to Florida and he spent the majority of his post-presidency at his Palm Beach area estate Mar-a-Lago. Not to mention most if not all of the Trump clan followed suit and have moved to the Sunshine State. Donald has owned his grand 20-acre estate in Florida since way back in the 80s, so it's definitely been in the family for quite some time and has a history of its own too. Also, Michael and I dropped our very own house tour of our new home that we moved into earlier this year. So go and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses. And even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Donald Trump is a politician, businessman, and more who served as the 45th president of the United States from 2017 until 2021. Despite his run being over, Trump continues to dominate the Republican Party and is also hinting at a third presidential campaign. Before Trump's political career took the spotlight, the billionaire businessman built a huge real estate portfolio with multi-million dollar estates across America, both for personal and business use. After his time at the White House came to an end, Donald and his wife Melania moved to his longtime Florida property as their main residence, with Trump's adult children buying up homes nearby. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, today checking out where Donald and Melania Trump call home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. Donald Trump and Melania took up permanent residency at their stunning Mar-a-Lago estate in January 2021, located in an exclusive area of Florida's Palm Beach. Considering the property was originally built in the 1920s, it is quite the history as well. The mansion was constructed between 1924 and 1927 for the socialite and post-serial heiress, Marjorie Merriweather Post, who inherited her father's serial empire when she was 27 after his tragic suicide. Post amassed a fortune of $250 million, which would be equal to about $1.5 billion these days, making her one of the richest women in US history. So of course, she went all out when it came to her Oceanside mansion. She hired architect Marion Sims, who specialized in Gilded Age in her design to envision her winter retreat on the beach. 20-acre property offered 128 rooms these days and spans the entire width of the island Palm Beach is on, from the Atlantic Ocean to the intercoastal waterway. The Spanish Moorish style mansion had exterior stone imported from Italy and tens of thousands of antique tiles dating back to the 15th century that came from a castle in Cuba. Many fixtures were gold plated and in the end, Post's project went eight times over budget, a lot of which was spent in the lavish living room. Here there was a statement ceiling that was a replica of the thousand wing ceiling in Venice, and this plus the walls were covered in a ton of gold leaf. Post designed the library in an English Georgian style which offered antique British oak paneled walls. According to Trump's former butler, the shelves here were lined with super rare first edition books, which received no appreciation from the Trump family, who apparently never once picked up any of these books. Inside, Mar-a-Lago spans a whopping 62,500 square feet of space and the rooms are opulent as you might expect. While when Post had the mansion constructed, there was a mix of styles throughout. The guest and master bedrooms reach a total of 58 and originally these quarters all had different themes. For example, there was a Dutch bedroom with antique tiles from there, a glass covered Venetian style room, Spanish and Portuguese in rooms, and the Louis XIV master suite. Coincidentally enough, this was also known to be Trump's favorite style himself. After some sneaky bartering, Donald Trump scored the Mar-a-Lago estate in 1985 from the Post family for the mere price of $8 million, which included the property itself and all of its antique furnishings. He further turned Mar-a-Lago into a private club in 1995 to help turn a profit from the massive estate, and he promised to carry out a restoration of the property in order to do so. Trump spent millions on the expensive restoration, which included a number of additions to the property. He built a 20,000 square foot ballroom with a rumored $7 million in gold leaf and a Louis XIV style, added two swimming pools, a beauty salon and a spa, and even spent 100K each on 
four gold-plated sinks in the new ballroom. While the mega home had went from 118 to 128 rooms and it had all been restored, some of the antique contents were sold off at auctions and replaced with replicas. Some of the things Trump got rid of included the jewel-covered marble dining table, an antique Spanish rug, Louis XIV chests, and Venetian glasses that were worth 1k a piece. These days, Donald and Melania maintain private quarters in a separate area of the Mar-a-Lago mansion and it serves as their primary residence. However, in recent years, Melania is said to have done some updates of her own. In the master suite, which previously boasted a Versailles style and Louis XIV details, it said that Melania wanted to expand the space as well as freshen things up. She revamped and enlarged the owner's suite, choosing dark woods and white marble accents. She even updated the private quarters with more of a modern aesthetic, which it seems her husband wasn't the biggest fan of. Apparently, he wanted to remove the wood and marble immediately. Aside from Trump's personal quarters, Mar-a-Lago offers club members access to two dining rooms, a beach club, pool, and spa, as well as guest suites. Those who step foot inside can enter through the detailed portico that leads to the main building, with plenty of neo-gothic accents throughout. The club's main living room boasts high ceilings and gold-plated designs on every wall. Because of its flat terrain and open-air access, Trump is even able to fly in on his own helicopter if needed. And if the club's multiple beaches just aren't enough, you can relax by the various pools on the property. A few years back, Forbes estimated the value of Mar-a-Lago estate at around $160 million, having increased greatly over the years thanks to extensive renovations, lavish features, historic background, and of course, we can't conclude this house tour without mentioning Donald's infamous Trump Tower residence in New York City. For many years, he's lived in the top three floors of the iconic tower, with his entire residence decorated in a gilded and opulent design as you might expect. 66 stories high in his penthouse on Fifth Avenue, Trump often enjoys nearly 11,000 sprawling square feet of living space, and his youngest son he shares with Melania, Baron, reportedly has a floor all to himself. Unusual Trump fashion this penthouse is decorated with over-the-top lavish details as well as cathedral ceilings, Corinthian columns, massive sparkling chandeliers, and gold accents throughout. The place just screams luxury and it was modeled after the Palace of Versailles. Not to mention it's a piece of pop culture history being featured on Trump's former show The Apprentice. Trump took Forbes on a tour during the last presidential election, boasting that the size was about 33,000 square feet, but he apparently over-exaggerated just a little bit. He had an office on the 26th floor in the building, so living and working here was easy even with a private elevator to go floor to floor. When Trump built the tower in 1983, the landmark skyscraper became one of the most recognizable and greatest in the world. When it was completed, it was the tallest glass building in Manhattan at the time, rising over 600 feet into the city skyline and sitting on less than an acre of land. Visually striking with its glass curtain wall and sawtooth faceting, old, Ron's exterior is a dramatic architectural masterpiece that has received rave reviews from the New York Times architecture critics. Its interior with a 100-foot mirrored atrium, 7-foot waterfall, and marbled floors are also equally impressive. These days, it's said Trump's massive penthouse here would be worth an estimated $54 million. Of course, this is far from an exhaustive list of Donald Trump's insane properties over the years, and he owns real estate for business and pleasure all over, including his Seven Springs estate in Westchester and one in New Jersey. But with him and the rest of the Trump clan moving to Florida full time, I think Mar-a-Lago is where he'll be spending most of his days. After wrapping up this house tour, what did you think about Trump's home? What about his design style? Would you ever? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well as who we should feature next on here. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll catch you all in another video. Bye. Kamala Harris is Martin Luther King Jr. 
Donald Trump's choice for vice president on the Republican ticket is J.D. Vance, a candidate well known for defining himself by the places he's lived. As told in his best-selling memoir, Hillbilly Elegy and the Ron Howard-directed film, J.D. Vance grew up in a middle-class Ohio home in the Rust Belt and often visited his family's old Kentucky home. Economic downturns and drug abuse significantly impacted both areas as well as Vance's family. Despite these challenges, Vance served four years in the Marines graduated from Ohio State University with a degree in political science and philosophy, and earned a law degree from Yale. After his education, he wrote his memoir, worked in the San Francisco Bay Area, and was elected U.S. Senator from Ohio in 2022. Throughout his journey, he's also collected some impressive properties, owning homes in Ohio, Washington, D.C., and Virginia. J.D. Vance was born in 1984 to a couple who soon separated. When he was very young, his father moved away and his parents divorced when he was six. Afterwards, his mother struggled with addiction and mental health issues and reportedly abused him physically. As a result, Vance was placed in the care of his grandparents. He grew up in Middletown, Ohio, and the childhood home referenced in Hillbilly Elegy is located there. Despite the chaos he experienced during his early years, Vance credits his upbringing with shaping his character and resilience. Vance's cousin Bonnie Mybers confirmed that Hillbilly Elegy accurately portrayed their family life. She explained the term hillbilly came from their grandmother, affectionately known as Mama, who used it to describe their family as hill people. The home where Vance grew up was actually pretty normal looking though. It was reported to have three bedrooms and 2,000 square feet of living space, not four bedrooms as previously mentioned. Built in 1900, it was considered middle class during his childhood. The two-story home underwent significant renovations in 2017 and would be worth around $300 thousand dollars in today's market. However, this isn't the only home with ties to JD located in Ohio. In 2018, Vance and his wife Usha, a lawyer from San Diego who resigned from her position at Munger Tolls in Olson following her husband's VP nomination, purchased a pre-Civil War home in Cincinnati for nearly $1.4 million. Built in 1858, the 6,405-square-foot home features five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms. Situated on about 2.3 acres in East Walnut Hills, it's located in a mostly liberal neighborhood. Other features of Vance's Victorian era home include a carriage house, apartments, a gated swimming pool, a pool house, and hiking trails. Prior to Vance moving in, the home underwent renovations and updates. Reports show the kitchen sits next to a breakfast nook and vaulted sunroom and also opens to a patio with stone fireplace and side yard. Nearby, there's a children's playroom as well as the fully equipped one-bedroom apartment in the carriage house. Much of the home kept its 19th century charm, featuring original wood floors, trim, and 10-foot, 11-inch high ceilings. A white spindled staircase with decorative molding leads from the entry hall to the second floor, where four spacious family bedrooms and a servant's bedroom and bath are located. I don't think they're going to use it for that anymore, but once upon a time it was. One bedroom includes a fireplace, while another features a cozy west-facing nook. JD's master suite offers a glimpse of the Ohio River through its large south-facing window, while there's also an attached bath with its floor-to-ceiling tiles. The landscape yard boasts mature hardwood trees, several native plants, stone patios, pathways, and low retaining walls. After his election to the U.S. Senate, J.D. Vance purchased a home in the Washington, D.C. area. He acquired the Alexandria, Virginia residence through a limited liability company for about $1.6 million. The stylish farmhouse home is said to boast over 2,500 square feet, along with five beds and four baths. The Vance family received a unique welcome to their left-leaning neighborhood, described by the Washingtonian as a yarn bombing. Local knitters apparently decked out a utility pole, signpost, and tree outside their new home with knitted flags, a crocheted rainbow, and a pink and white sign reading, Respect Our Rights. Well, originally built in 1925, the Vance's home has been recently renovated. Notable features include mature gardens, custom masonry and cabinets, wood floors, and a classic Alexandria front porch.
According to listing materials, the property blends traditional Delray charm with modern elements. The main house has an open floor plan with elegant wood floors, while there's also an upper level laundry, a luxury master suite with separate exercise room or office and more. The home's thoughtfully designed with many custom touches like wood burning fireplaces in both the main house and guest house and two beverage fridges for effortless entertaining. The guest house is full of natural light, featuring hardwood floors, a kitchenette, and a full bathroom with in-floor heating. The standalone home is set in the left-leaning Delray neighborhood, where nearly 81% of voters in Alexandria actually supported Biden in the 2020 election. After looking at J.D. Vance's homes, we can see the locations of his properties might not align with his political stance, but he seems to love the neighborhoods he lives in anyways. From the elegant farmhouse in Del Rey with its custom features to his home in Cincinnati, we can see JD likes a blend of charming history and modern amenities. That'll wrap up today's tour, but would you be able to live in a town that supported opposite political views from yours? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. I'm Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all next time. Bye!